Huh. Working late tonight? I thought we might have a chat. Why well, can't? I've got to watch father, actually. He's on the telly tonight. Hmm? He's about traffic congestion. They want a six-minute discussion on an important topical subject. You know the sort of thing. I ought to. I'd have to do it often enough. Oh, yes, of course. You and father. You're always on the box. Speaking for export. But, uh, traffic congestion. Well, apparently all the traffic in Fairmile was tied up for two hours last Saturday. So spotlight's a national issue. Yes, there'll be some maps and uh, bits of film of hooting motorists. And a studio panel, I suppose. One expert, one politician, one industrialist. So, which one is your father? Yeah, that's a point, isn't it? One can't tell nowadays. Well, I'd like to, Richard, but I can't. I'm um, doing something on television. Oh, yeah. This uh, fair mile business. <laughs> yeah, the town that came to a stop. <laughs> yes, well, that happens. Who's with you? Nobody. What? I'm on my own. No panel? Well, they usually have at least three politicians. One of our chaps, uh, somebody who represent the government. They don't want a discussion. They don't want any party politics at all. They want straight talk. Traffic uh, problems are uh, party politics. You can't get away from it. Anything that loses votes is party politics. <coughs> Only nowadays you have to decide whose vote you can afford to lose. <laughs> well, she's really very good claret. I feel rather guilty at drinking it all. I, uh, I don't drink myself in the middle of the day. I, I don't like um, going to sleep in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> Easy to see you're not a politician. It's only being able to go to sleep and the debates that makes the House of Commons bearable. <laughs> <laughs> Fairmile, the town that came to a stop. Are we seeing here the future of Britain's roads? Where is Fairmile, anyway? Well, it's one of those uh, south of London places. Um, Pearly, Isha, Fairmile. Well, I can never remember which is which. Oh, there he is. Mr. Caswell Bly. Well, he does Leading look like a captain of industry. Of the National Export Board. Good evening, Mr. Bly. Good evening. Tell us, are all our roads going to be like this in the future? I don't pretend to know the future, young man. But surely you do. No, God help us, always in one of his young man moves. Base your plans on experience. All you can do is to try to change the present. If you've got a damn silly situation now, then change it now. And then you change the future with it. But in the country's present situation, our roads really are first priority. The first priority is to get rid of the damn silly situation. coming to seem dangerously like party political intrigue. All right, party politics is a dirty business. But then traffic problems are party politics. We can't get away from that. Now, I don't mind getting my hands dirty if the job needs doing. But surely you've never been politically active. No, it's an industrialist. Oh, Brian Dean. No, no cast. Politics. No man is about politics. We've got to realize that. If we want to solve problems like the road system in this country, then we must do it in a political way. But surely, at this moment, there is no politician whose job it is to solve Fair Miles traffic problems, is there? No, it's a sad business. Hey? No, the MP for Fair Miles died yesterday. A local coronary. Supply, is it? It's in the papers. It's something that's affecting the whole of Britain. Well, no, it's not a local problem. It's a national problem, and it needs a national policy. Well, now we turn up to that to another subject. He's always related. up to something, it's One of the results of the congestion on Britain's roads, road accidents. He can't want to go into politics. He does. He's always taking his MPs to lunch. You tell me yourself he wants to be a minister. Well, he's been sitting on the fence. Waiting to be asked? Yes. Well, I don't just ask him to be a minister. Well, he's been thinking they might. The conceit. He's been building himself up. He is conceited. He's the age for it. He wants to be remembered. He's got you. Oh, yes, and um, young Josh, the full dynasty bit. Three generations of Blyes. If he says anything more about us having another son, I am going to hit him. <laughs> you can't sex children, they are chickens. Anyway, 
No, he wants another sort of immortality now. He wants to be in the history books as a man who solved the traffic problem. You know, really, if Cass believed in the future life, then life in the present might be a great deal easier. Darling, he can't be a Minister of Transport without going into Parliament. Well, he's been thinking they might make him a Lord. Yes, but they don't let an important minister like that go into the House of Lords. I mean, why else do they all give up their titles? Well, I think he's beginning to realise that. Do you think he would stand for Parliament? Well, you heard it. He said he'd be willing to dirty his hands. <laughs> Poor Cass, he's not very tactful. I don't know that I'd mind if he did. Stan? Mm. He's being very obstreperous at the moment. Coming in far too often, interfering, fighting with Wilder. Well, I don't mind that, he keeps Wilder busy. Still, I can't say I'd be sorry to see Cass's energies directed somewhere else for a while. Well, you've got to come down on one side or the other for a start. You know which side I'm on. Do I? Seems to me you balance your friends pretty carefully from all parties. Not my close friends, Jack. Have you got any? <laughs> Damn you. <laughs> Old friends, yes, and I'm one of the oldest, but close friends, not now, Cass. I'm still a party member. Hey? Okay. Never let that go since the old days. Ah, oh, they'll past. No, we were close enough then, Jack. No. Now you want something out of me, so you remind me of them. So, you're still a member of the Labour Party, eh? Yes. Well, paid off? Mm-hmm. Of course. You know, I don't like wine, never fancied it. Whiskey. Oh, no. <laughs> member of the government seen in a posh club drinking whiskey with his Dover soul. I don't choose to let them laugh at me. Well, if you're still a paid-up member, that's something. Did you watch? Yes. What did you think? Well, he wants to be an MP, doesn't he? I suppose. Must be mad. Why be an MP when you can buy one for tuppence? Well, he wants to be a minister. Well? I've been wishing you got on better with Father. Well, I'm not complaining. Does he? Well, if there any way we could help him, it might make things easier. How? Well, I don't know. You've got fingers in so many pies. Because well, I don't know if he realises just how much being an MP eats up time, especially with such a small majority. I mean, he'd have to resign from the National Export Board the moment he's adopted as a candidate, wouldn't he? I'm not saying we couldn't use you. Yes. I'm promising nothing, Tuss, but if we wanted you to be for our own reasons, not for yours... Well, what reasons? To win a seat. Which? Well, there's a by-election pending. Fair mile. That's a Tory seat. I said to win a seat. You don't think we give you one, do you? Fair miles marginal, about 1,300. Dormitory town, close to London. Now, you prefer that. Mm -hmm, yes. Light industry, but not enough to win the seat. Too many neat little suburban commuters with their briefcases and their packets of sandwiches and their dead-end white-collar jobs. They might vote Liberal, but they wouldn't vote for us. But they've got a candidate already, surely. Oh, I fought three times, lost three times. Now he's moved on. And they haven't built his place. Not bothered. And now, because it's a Tory seat and they give us the date of the, of the by-election, you know. Now they're looking for somebody in a hurry. Me? Ah, to win it. I told you, we can get our vote out, but it's not enough. 700 people have got to change sides. Not for better or worse, you've got a reputation. You're a go-getter. They've read that in the papers. And they've seen you on television oh. telling them. <laughs> yes, sir. You're an expert on roads. They've got a road problem at Fairmile. You can't solve it. No one can solve it without you pull the bloody place down and start over again. But they don't know that. Maybe you could pick up some votes and win the seat for us. Will they adopt me? Oh, that's up to them. If from Transport House... Oh, oh, oh that's the kiss of death, that is. If Transport House backs you, you won't even get on the short list. No. Best let me talk to one or two people, have a word with them, and we'll see what we can arrange. Well, I'd better have a word with one or two people. When it comes to pulling strings at the central office, I have more friends than your father has. Well, I didn't know you were a member of the Tory party. I'm not. I have no politics, only friends. Your father is a member, I take it. I don't know. Well, he better be if he wants a Tory seat. 
The local people don't like it if you join at the last minute. Oh, that's a good question. What? Whether he wants a Tory seat. Well, you can't see the Labour Party adopting him. There are socialist millionaires. Oh. And Father's not a patient man. He wants power now. He wouldn't be interested in opposition. Well, you'd better find out. I don't want to start pulling strings until I know they're the right ones to pull. Yes? Mr. Budge is here. Oh. Paul Budge. And ask him to wait, will you? No, I'm on my way. You're showing quite an interest in overseas contracts. Well, I still have a lot to learn. I'm trying to learn it. But I'm surprised Paul Budge wants to teach you. Usually he rather discourages too much interest in his department. Overseas contract. Oh, I agree. That's particularly important at a time of national crisis. We can't do too much about it. Look, I think the best thing to do about father for the time being is nothing. Discourage him, if anything. That's bound to set him on. Well, I don't like being rushed. Well, you are rushed. That's politics. Why should the Tories wait for you to find a candidate? You should have one. What's the closing date for nominations? Next week. And how many do you expect to get? Twelve, fifteen. You'll find Councillor Mallow on the list already. Oh, and who's he? The young man, a bit too big for his britches. Ah, CND. Wouldn't be on the council if he was. Well, there's bound to be a CND nomination. Barry Dawson. He's put up by the young socialists. He won't reach the short list if I've got anything to do with it. Hey, Jim Harvey, A-list, AU candidate. Union pays. No other union candidates. He's bound to be shortlisted. You think Bly could win? The nomination or the election? The election. Look, Davis, it's a by-election. You'll have national publicity. If you've got a national figure standing, you may pick up a few votes. I shan't say more. <laughs> no, it's no use trying to dissuade me. I've made up my mind. Justine thinks you're too old for it. That's not fair. Old? Cass, I didn't say you were too old. I said anybody else would be. Ha, <laughs> flattery. It's only a means to an end, anyway. Yes. I've always flattered you. I don't intend to stop just because you're going into Parliament. Well, I've got to get adopted first. And win the seat. He'll win. Want to bet? Five pounds. A hundred. Done. <laughs> How many will they nominate? Well, Jack says 12 or 13, and they haven't got much time, so they'll get the women's section to put me up. They? Yes, Jack knows, knows one of the local bosses, Alderman Hall. He runs the Labour group in the council. He's got the two North wards wrapped up. Well, why the women's section, then? Why not one of his wards? Oh, too obvious. Besides, if the women nominate me, that'll be one more group to support me. Mm -hmm. It all sounds very American to me, with hard-faced men in smoke-filled rooms. <laughs> Mommy! Mommy! What is it, Josh? We're in bed. Well, politics is the same the world over. So it should. <laughs> and after the nomination. Darling, you can't be in bed if you're standing We see up the executive of the Josh. general management bed, committee. They make a short list of four, and then there's a party meeting, and then they vote on the short list. Your grandchildren say they're in bed. You want to see them? Yes, I'll come up. You'll be able to take them to tea in the House of Commons if you get in. No, of course I'll get in. Then why bet Justine a hundred pounds that you wouldn't? Tell me another way she'd take the money. installation business. Oh, I'm leaving all that to Paul Budge. That's no, not like you. I always give him a free hand at his department. I don't interfere. I didn't say I was discontented. No, but I am Paul. What? I'm discontented. I've got a job to do here. I need information. I need communication. An easy relationship. And being on the export board, of course. Overseas contracts should be 20% of our business. More. They're vulnerable, Paul. When the government starts cutting down on public expenditure, it's civil engineering which takes the cuts. We need insurance, even if it means less profit. Well, of course, the old man... Yes? Oh, 
He's always taken a special interest. He's spoken for my department at board meetings, represented it. Restricted it. In a sense. He's kept overseas business down, deliberately. You think he's working for exports. But he's only an act, Paul. The figures speak for themselves. You know he wants to be an MP. I've heard rumors. Well, he can't do that and speak for overseas contracts at board meetings. No time. No. You ought to speak for yourself, Paul, as a director, as a member of the board. I don't see the old man making me a director. I've been around too long. Well, he might not be able to stop you. Anyway, until that time when you need a friend on the board, you've got one. Provided I get the information I need. I'd just like to know what's going on. We ought to give Paul Budge a seat on the board. Oh, don't be a damn fool. He's earned it. You don't earn a seat on the board of the Bly organization. You have it, or you don't. I suppose it's all sewn up with this selection committee of yours. It's never sewn up. He'd uh, uh, pay his own expenses, I take it. And no need to worry about that. He's rolling in it. If we adopt him, he'll cost us nothing. Chairman Bly Construction. Member of National Export Board, past president, Institute of Directors. He's also a member of the Labour Party. That's enough. Yes. Odd, oh, it doesn't list it in who's who. He might have put it down under recreations. <laughs> I think that's enough, Mr. Davis. Sorry. Anyway, you know my view. Just give me someone with a chance of winning the seat who won't cost us anything, and I don't care if it's Yogi Bear. Very interesting, Mr. Davis. Since you haven't got a vote in the steering committee, your view doesn't make much difference, does it? I'll thank you to remember that the agent doesn't choose the candidate in this or any other constituency. No. But if you are trying to get the nomination for Bly, it might be a useful argument if the agent supported him. Wouldn't you say so, Alderman Thorpe? What an old devil he is. I spoke to him today about making Paul Budge a director, but of course he wouldn't wear it. Why not? Where well, he thinks there are too many on the board as it is. Anyway, he speaks for overseas contracts. He's his pet. Chatting up Middle Eastern contact men, manoeuvring with shaky governments. He loves it. Just so long as it doesn't get in the way of building motorways. <laughs> Do you remember the time he tried to learn Arabic on those records? <laughs> he won't be chatting up many Arabs now. No, I suppose not. How's that working out? For him or for me? Do you want a drink? No. Stay here. It's comfy. For you. Oh, it's hard to tell yet. Keeps him occupied to a certain extent, but he still comes into Bly's. He's going to be a lot more occupied if he gets in. Yeah, I don't think he realises that. The government majority, what it is now, is not going to have any free time at all. Well, don't tell him. Odd he doesn't think of it. Well, he's not looking ahead. No, that's not right. He does look ahead, but it's kind of... Dream. See, he's taken decisions all his life and he thinks he'll go on taking them. He sees himself as the head of a government department. He doesn't realize what it is to be a working MP. You're going to have a free hand then, aren't you? If this selection committee thing adopts him. Will you make Paul Badger director? No, I don't think so. It's too old. I see you've had three years membership of the Labour Party, Mr. Dawson. That's right. And you're 32 years old. Yes. May I ask you what were your other political affiliations before you joined the Labour Party? Well, I've always been interested in the Labour Movement. But you never joined the Labour Party. I think you know very well, Alderman Hall, that school teachers are not encouraged to join any political party. The parents don't like it. Uh, thank you, Miss Ritchie. Uh, but uh, Mr. Dawson changed his mind, finally. I beg your pardon? You changed your mind and joined us. Uh, yes. In spite of the uh, discouragement. He didn't say he was discouraged. I said teachers are discouraged. I noticed. It isn't a question of active discouragement. It's a question of atmosphere. Uh, yes, yes, that's quite right. So you've never been a member of any other political party, then? 
When I was a young man, I was a member of the Communist Party. I left on a point of principle. Three years ago, perhaps? Oh, six or seven. I was only 25. Not reached the age of discretion, eh? You <laughs> <laughs> might say so. <laughs> what do you say about that, Mr Willoughby? Not reached the age of discretion at 25. <laughs> I'd remind you, Alderman, it was the young socialists who nominated Mr Dawson. Oh, yes. We have great confidence in his ability and in the soundness of his political principles. There'll be time enough to express it after Mr Dawson's left the room. I think we'll stick to questions for the time being. Uh, Alderman Thorpe. I've been looking at Mr Dawson's written answers to our questions and I see that he's been an unsuccessful candidate six times in three years. I wonder if he'd care to tell us why he considers he was unsuccessful. This Sheikh Mohammed, is he able to deliver the contract? Well, uh, nothing certain in the Middle East, but they've sacked three ministers, shot two, stoned one to death for adultery, and Mohammed's still there. So, what's our first step? Well, Mr Bly usually lunches him at his club. The Arabs are very keen on English tradition. You'll find he gets through an amazing amount of jam roly-poly. Why not? It's still a tax-deductible expense, inviting foreigners to lunch. I don't have to ask you if you're prepared to live in the constituency, Councillor Maller. <laughs> no, I've made my home here. <laughs> what makes you think you'd be a good candidate for this constituency? Well, I, I had hoped that by now that might have been obvious. <laughs> Never mind if it's obvious or not, Councillor. It's a usual question at interviews of this kind, and I'll thank you to answer it. Well, I know the constituency. I've lived here all my life. I've served the party on the council, and I know the issues. Local issues. That's right. Prince, What's you your have... attitude to national issues? Such as? Such as Vietnam. I'm content to be guided by the majority opinion in the party. You yeah, mean yeah. you have no opinions of your own? I didn't say that. All right, what are they? I think we've got to get our priorities right. If we want to keep a Labour government in power, we've got to learn to... Stifle our consciences? I didn't say that. What do you say? Loyalty. Loyalty to the leadership and to the consensus of opinion within the party is more important the than... world peace? I didn't say that. Bly, would you come in, please? Uh, yes. <clears throat> Help! I need somebody. Help! Not just anybody. Help! You know, I of course I got my fingers crossed. I had them crossed all the morning. I can't even do any housework. Would you be prepared to live in the constituency, Mr. Bly? I'd uh, be prepared to buy a house here. That wasn't the question. We know you can afford to buy a house. Do you mean that you'd be prepared to buy or rent uh, premises which you would use as your office? Uh, yes. Uh, yes. You have a car, Mr. Bly, of course. Uh, what? Oh, yes, yes, of course. Uh, with the most ample carrying capacity, if I may say so. <laughs> Do you have many friends with cars? Uh, naturally. Who would be prepared to lend them on polling day? The Tories in this constituency have more cars than we have, Mr. Bly. Oh, oh yes, yes, of course. Are they members of the Labour Party too? I've never asked them. They're my friends. But uh, you yourself are a member of the party in good standing. Yes. How long have you been a member? Thirty-five years. Active? I voted Labour, if that's what you mean. Of course, there's no proof of that. No, it's meant to be a private matter, as I understand it. Have you actively engaged in party activities? Uh, such as? A local government, educational work, help at election time. Uh, no, uh, I've been busy. Yes, I'll bet you have. I don't think I'm very different to any other industrial worker in that respect. Industrial worker? Uh, what else am I? An employer. Yes, like Lord Rubens. Or any other worker in the production industry, doing my best in my own way to keep production high. That's a debating point. Oh, what? He's making debating points. Well, that's one of the things a candidate's got to do, Miss Ritchie. I doubt whether the Tories will be as easy to score points off as some of us here. <laughs> now, what makes you feel that you'd be a good candidate for this constituency, Mr. Bly? Well, you've got a traffic problem. I know as much about roads as any man in the country. Uh, local issues. That's right. What's your attitude to national issues? Uh, such as? Vietnam. Well, I'm content to be guided by a majority opinion within the party. You mean you've no opinions of your own? No, I mean I agree with the majority opinion. Yeah, yeah. 
And a bomb. I agree with my Bevan, whom I once had the privilege of knowing. Another of your friends, Mr. Bly? I said I knew him. I never had the honor to be a friend of his. But I knew him, I worked with him, I admired him. Yeah, yeah. And uh, John Strachey. I worked with them both. It seems a pity most of his friends are dead. No, I don't like what you're suggesting, Miss Ritchie. Mr. Bly's got good friends in the Labour movement and in the government. Otherwise, you... Yes? Oh, do go on. That's not important. Oh, perhaps Mr. Bly would like to tell us who his friends are. No, I, I agree with Alderman Hall. It's not important. If I have friends uh, in the government, they're a liability with people as independent as you are. <laughs> no, if you decide to elect me, it'll be, have to be on my own merits. On the preliminary vote, there are five candidates with one vote or less. Eliminate them. Uh, now, no, just wait, a minute. Wait, wait. Eliminate them. Who's left? In alphabetical order, Mr. Bly, Mr. Dawson, Mr. Harvey, Mr. James, Councillor Maller, Mr. Peterson. a man like Bly wants to be a candidate. A spirit of service, Miss Ritchie. He wants to do good in the world. He wants a job in the government. Or don't you watch the television? You know, she makes a very good cup of tea, Mrs Hyde. Who put him up to it? Mr Bly offered his services as a candidate, and he was nominated by the women's section. And we all know what that means. You've been pressured, haven't you? I'm surprised you stand for it. I'd always thought of you as independent. Oh, look, nobody puts pressure on me, you know that. But Bly's a good man, he could win the seat for us. Is he a socialist? He's been a member of the Labour Party. I said, though. is he a socialist? Barry Dawson's a good man. He has very high principles. <laughs> yeah, I heard him say so. I'd like to see him given a chance. Well, I've no doubt you'll be voting for him. We shall. Well, I shan't. We've been doing some arithmetic. Voting's a matter of individual conscience, of course. Naturally. But you're not the only one with friends on the committee. And the party covers a wide front of opinion. The one with three votes was Dawson, I suppose. You've done a deal with somebody. There's not three left-wingers on this committee. Tell him your arithmetic, Peter. When it comes to voting, suppose Barry gets three votes again. Not enough. And suppose none of us votes for Bly. I think he can count on four votes. But we've all got four votes each. And there are three of us who voted for Barry. Three fours are twelve. One vote each for Barry. That leaves us nine votes. Suppose we split those nine votes between the other candidates. Then on the next ballot, Barry still gets our three votes. Bly still gets your four. But the others get five or six each. So we both lose. We can't get Barry in, but we can keep Bly out. He's a good man. He ought to have the chance to put his case to the selection conference. That's our feeling about Barry. Let the conference decide. And may the best man win. All right. <laughs> I intended to. <laughs> Mind, it's tricky, the conference. You've got to be able to make a speech. Now, what about? Anything you like. Yourself, what sort of man you are. The party, what our policy should be. Any aspect of policy, anything at all. You speak for 15 minutes. 
Then you answer questions from the floor. I'll tell him about myself. <laughs> oh, I thought you might. Have some more port. Oh, no. Oh, uh, whiskey. Uh, Webster. That's funny. What's he doing here? Oh. Sheikh Mohammed. I didn't know he was in the country. Oh, why should you? Oh, it's my business to know these things. Huh. Uh, never mind. Tell me about the uh, conference. Oh, thanks. Well, I spoke to Hall. Uh, Webster. Give my compliments to the Arab gentleman and tell him I'm delighted to see him back in England. Uh, yes, you were saying? Well, now, there'll be 120 delegates, each with a vote. Election is by overall majority. That means you've got to get 50% of the votes plus one. They go on voting, knocking out the chap at the bottom of the list, until you do. Until I do? Until someone does. Father won't be coming in, I gather, so I thought we might discuss the agenda together. Bit of a departure, isn't it? No, Father and I usually spend an hour talking things over before a board meeting. I thought you knew that. I know that you and he do, but you and I never have. Well, Father, um... He isn't coming in today. You said. It's a bit of a departure. Yes, you said. We'll call it a gesture. We shall have to work more closely in the future, as it seems. Has he been adopted? He's on the short list. As well, nobody ever tells me these things. Usually nobody needs to. But what was it about the agenda? Oh, um, general matters. What general matter in particular? Overseas contracts. That isn't on the agenda. No. I wondered if we ought to add it. Why? Well, you've been spending so much of your time with overseas contracts lately, I thought you might like to let the board know how you see things. But your father speaks for overseas contracts, or so I'm told. Oh, well, he's been so busy with his political stuff. Of course, if he's adopted, he'll be busier still. You want me to speak for overseas contracts? Not for. About. So I think it might help the board to know how you see things. A fresh eye is always useful. I think we should discuss your overall picture and your ideas. I'm not sure that my ideas about overseas business are ready for discussion yet. Oh, it's always better to discuss ideas early, don't you think? It's very difficult to modify them if they get too set. But if you don't want to put them to a full board meeting, perhaps um, you and I might talk around them a little. Perhaps. I'd feel more in the picture. Yes, but we haven't time to now, though, have we, if we're going to discuss the agenda? I've been wondering whether we might give Paul Budge a seat on the board. Then he could speak for his own department. I don't think that your father would stand for that. Paridos? Fifteen votes if he's lucky. Harvey? Fifty. Not all the union votes will go to the AEU. They won't all vote for Jim Harvey. You can't count on them. I count on some of them. Say, 45, perhaps. Not so many. Jim's not a bad candidate. He won't win the seat. How many can you count on? 24 ward votes solid, 16 others for favours done, some more I'm not saying. You need 61 for an overall majority. We'll get Councillor Maller's votes on the second ballot. Sheikh Mohammed is in the country, and I didn't know about it. He comes into the club as cool as you please and walks over to me and says he's lunching with John Wilder, Sir John Wilder. Ah, oh, he was at school near Bournemouth. He likes a title. So he'd like you better if you were Sir Caswell Bly or Lord Bly. Except then, of course, you couldn't get into Parliament. Now, don't dodge the issue. Why didn't I know? I didn't know. Well, what is Paul Budge doing, then? Putting Wilder in the picture. In the picture? Wilder's taking over the bloody gallery. Cass, that's exaggerated. How could you let him? How could I stop him? What? Well, what do you expect me to do? We're joint managing directors, he and I. We're on a level. But you're my son. Yes. Wilder represents Elbertsons. If it ever comes to a showdown, the family can outvote him. Uh, do you want it to come to a showdown? Of course not. Don't be a damn fool. When it comes to a showdown, it'll be on our ground and at our time. What do you want me to do? Tell him to keep his nose out of overseas contracts? He has the right to go where he likes, ask what he likes, see whom he likes. I look after overseas business. Yes, to restrict it. No, to keep a proper balance. Anyway, you haven't been in, have you? But you encouraged me. You, you and Justine, you encouraged me to stand. You wanted to be in the government. You wanted to be a minister. Oh, I still do. 
Well, I'll try to come to some arrangement with Wilder. You can't make an arrangement with Wilder. He'll eat you. Oh, I thought that if you didn't come in quite so often, we could manage. Look, I can do something for this country if they let me. The road system is in a mess. Now, I need this minister job. Now, once they adopt me, once I'm elected, then I can do both jobs. No. No, Cass, you can't have both. Look. And look, Ken, he has to have his eyes open. He has to know. Probably you'll lose both. You'll lose control at Blythe. They'll make you give up the national export thing. You won't get a job in the government. Well, why not? Look, did Jack Wigan promise you anything? No. Well, of course he didn't. All they want is to win the seat. They... Look, Cass, why should they make you a minister? when you haven't got any political experience. This isn't just a matter of running roads. It means keeping your end up in the House of Commons. You don't know anything about that. You aren't used to argument and persuasion and being heckled. What you know about is making decisions and giving orders. You'd be lucky if they made you an undersecretary like Lord Thing. Well? But look, once you're in, you're caught. With the government majority as small as it is now, what time are you going to have to come back here to Blyze and fight Wilder? They're going to want you in the house all the time. Not to talk or to advise them or to work, but simply to vote. Just a head to be counted. You've never even thought about this. Think about it now. You encouraged me. We were wrong. He's changed his mind. What kind of a fool does that make me? The same kind of fool as it makes me. Well, he can't back down. He can. Well, if he does, I'll break the story to the press. You tell him that. You see the headlines? Socialist millionaire gets cold feet. What do you want him to do then? Go through with it. Face the meeting, make his speech. Then I'll see to it he's beaten. All right. Not badly. No, or I'd look a fool anyway for backing him. He'll make a respectable show. But he'll be beaten. That's the end of it. using any stick they can to beat the Labour movement these days, brothers. You can't pick up a Tory paper without reading headlines about demarcation disputes, unofficial strikes and walkouts, but you add up the number no, no, of... No, 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 leave it open. I want to hear what he's saying. Well, I've been to Germany, brothers, and I know... There's been a change of policy, that's all. They've decided they don't mind a middle-class image these days, but they can't afford too many bosses because the left wing gets restive. They told Father privately that he won't get the nomination. Of course, he'll do himself proud with a fighting speech and all that, but uh, privately it's all fixed. Anyway, I don't suppose he'll mind too much. He'll get very restive spending all that time away from Blyes. There's this uh, harbour installation thing that you've been taking such an interest in. I think he'd like to sink his teeth into that again. Senior directors should have washrooms of their own. One shouldn't have to share. Well, you could take a piece out of Henderson's office if you want one built. Doors will be on your side, of course. Me now? If you please, Mr. Blythe. Miss Lingard, where's Budge? His wife's not well, Sir John. Mr. Kenneth Bly gave him a week's leave of absence.
I'll repeat the question. If you had a free hand, how would you deal with the traffic problems of this town? <laughs> if anybody had a free hand, there'd be no traffic problems. <laughs> you wanted to bypass ten years ago. Now, what happened to that? <laughs> no. There is no local answer now. It is a national problem. It is a problem of land, a problem of, of, of productivity. You need more roads to produce more, and you need to produce more to pay for the roads. It's like the chicken and the egg, which comes first. And no one knows the answer, so you all sit back and do nothing. And yet here, in this town, we know the disastrous result of this do-nothing policy. Is that half an hour? Oh, that's the applause. That takes a time. Well, that sounds as though he's finished, anyway. Uh, what happens now? Well, they vote. We wait. Of course he made a good speech. I told you he would. What? My God, they can't do that. Look, haven't you got your people under control? Look, I told you, you can't rely on a conference. With 14 votes, Councillor Mallow stands down, and they vote again between the three of you. The position is quite clear. You will have 46 votes. That's not an overall majority. Mr Harvey has 36, Mr Dawson 24. Both may increase their votes on the second ballot. That's right. You haven't won yet, you know. Can't rely on a conference. You think you've got it all sewn up, then they go and fancy somebody. They're human. They want to do what they think is right, so when it comes to the push, they try to pick the best man. And it's a secret ballot. More's a pity. Well, I made a very good speech. On the second ballot, Mr. Bly had 48 votes, Mr. Harvey had 37 votes, and Mr. Dawson has 35 votes. Oh, hard luck, Dawson. Well, what, what, what happens now? Oh, they have to vote again now. It's between you and me, then. Still, you're 11 votes ahead. I expect you will get it. Yes, but why are they taking so long? But they must have finished by now. Bly wants to withdraw now. He can't withdraw. I better get back to the hall. He says you concede to Harvey. He can't withdraw. I'll break him publicly if he does. You tell him that. Well, it's a bit difficult with so many people listening. of the final ballot. Mr. Harvey, 62 votes. Mr. Bly, 58 votes. Congratulations, <laughs> Harvey. Thank you. Thank you. I therefore it declare the best that Jim Harvey oh, is the party's candidate you better go in now. for this I hope constituency. I hope I'll have your assistance <laughs> at the election, brother. Goodbye. Good luck. <laughs> Lies. 